psychiatric disorder that's recognised, although there is some dispute about the terminology, called personality disorder, which is really related to how people um, have developed their coping me mechanisms with stress and how at times of stress that the response they have might not be helpful um, and so lead the, into more and more difficulties and particularly difficulties in relationship to themselves but also to other people. We find that within the homes population the um, rates of personality disorder are about 70% whereas in the general population it would be more like 2-3%. And that, and that of course um, has an impact on how people interact with other people because it is about the, the notion of relationships and safety. Um, and then one of the other you know, very common difficulties that people have is substance misuse um, and that could be from uh, you know, all substances you know, with alcohol and also um, the, a wide range of drugs um, and that's a critical issue that is often accompanies um, personality disorder or other mental health difficulties. I think I commonly see people who have experience of very significant and specific traumas and have um, experiences related to PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and that can have an impact on how people can manage in um, stressful situations. Well, I was homeless for 20 years, so I became homeless when I was around about uh, 20, 21 years of age. Uh, my first night on the street, uh, this is back in Manchester, my hometown where I come from, uh, and I was completely naive. I didn't have a clue uh, about any services or homeless charities or anything like that. Uh, and I tried sleeping on very much a similar thing like this, a bench like this, uh, and I was like contemplating whether I could sleep on it or not, whether it's comfortable or not. Um, and basically I had a very traumatic experience at that point with some guy. Uh, and so that just set up, I was really paranoid from that moment on. Uh, and I didn't sleep for nearly two weeks. I walked around day and night because I was so frightened to go to sleep. Uh, and then eventually uh, tiredness and exhaustion took over. I tried to sleep in Piccadilly bus station, which is uh, in the centre of Manchester, uh, and I don't know how long I've been sleeping for, but uh, all of a sudden I was rudely awoken by somebody kicking my head in. Uh, so that was my introduction to the, to the street, basically. Some of the difficulties I faced out, out on the street uh, particularly because at the time I, ha I had no idea I had an undiagnosed mental health issue uh, and so I, I was dealing with a lot of paranoia, uh, I was drinking as a way of self-medicating uh, and also using any other drugs really that came, came my way sort of thing um, as a way of just trying to cope with, with the, the difficulties that I was facing just mentally sort of thing. I think homeless people with mental health issues automatically receive less support than the general population because they that they find it hard to sign on to a GP. They don't get regular support because they're often in different places every night. They might be in different boroughs, so that it's hard to keep track on somebody who's homeless who needs the support. Well, if you put yourself in the position of someone who's homeless and you're sleeping rough in the park every night, for instance, or different parks, you've got no network, you've got no social scene, you can't meet up with friends in the pub, you can't afford it, you can't... Um, so you're socially very isolated and that isolation can lead to depression and can lead to all sorts of other problems, but it's the isolation that often starts it off. I never thought that I would be homeless in my 40s and the social services they housed me for 28 days but then they said that I wasn't vulnerable as a woman 
I've now been around this area in Hackney for two and a half years and I, I sleep on the floor, basically, in someone's house. I feel like I'm disconnected from my reality from how I lived before and, and able to survive now. It's very depressing. I, I can get a meal Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because I'm going to go to this church, a church tomorrow and the church tonight and, and back here on Wednesday. So I know I can get food and that kind of keeps me going is what's made me come out and keep me going. But um, it's affected my mental health. Um, some of my former friends have said to me that they can't hold a conversation with me and I'm not speaking coherently and I think, no, I need somewhere to live. That's what would help. So I can stay clean, wash my clothes. I don't really want to, I mean, I'm very grateful to have these places, but really I'm a grown woman. I want to be able to have a bath and wash my own clothes. I mean, it's helpful to talk, but at the same time, you have to be careful who you're talking to, because even in places like this, there's lots of drugs or... So you need to be a little bit... As a woman on my own, I need to be a little bit selective who I'm giving my number to, because even if people are saying they're going to help you, I've had a few experiences where I'll just end up being stalked by phone. <laughs> I think it's, it's important homeless people with mental health issues receive support. Partly because we all need support with things in life. I mean, I think it's this idea that we're a special category. It's just where we, we all need different types of support at different times, whatever we're doing. When you're homeless, I think it's a condition which is extremely stressful. It can be extremely isolating. Um, it can, you, you have to become quite survival focused. And when you're having to focus on that, it can be hard to to look, lift your eyes up and see the things you need to do. So sometimes a bit of support can help you do that and just help you cope with the stress of it. If you're homeless and you've got mental health problems, then it's, it's, it's multiple things. Now, the mental health issues might be one of the reasons you became homeless or you became homeless um, for other reasons. But any one thing, any one of these things is stressful. When you put them together, it becomes extremely stressful. So I think it's really, um, it, it, it's the challenge of rebuilding, rebuilding your sense of well-being, your sense of self, your confidence, your ability to connect with people, is uh, is, is 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 very difficult. And it's but it's absolutely essential because, again, as we we all need support with things in life. We need to be the most important thing we need is community and connection, which homelessness works against, which mental health issues works against. So it's but to get. To me, the aim to get out of these things and to, and to be able to cope with these things is to be connected. So that's where the support comes in, I think. <laughs> New staff and volunteers can assist on mental wellbeing. I mean, Simple things, first of all, um, being respectful, listening, recognise their individuality, that, that just because they happen to land in a, a homeless environment, it's, there's, there's no judgement to be made in that. It could happen to any of us with a you know, certain amount of misfortune in life. Um, I, think, I, just, I think listening's a big one, and, and I think respectful listening, because I think one of the things, I think there's a risk when volunteers come into places, they want to know people's stories. But one of the things is, if you go to, you, depending on where you're at in life, you may want to tell your story, you may not. So I think it's about really gauging where that individual's at. And that might be, and depending on how, how severe their mental health problems are, they may not be in a position to talk at all. So then it might be just sitting with them, spending time. But really, very simple things, being polite, being warm, being as, as, as helpful as necessary, recognising the person's abilities as well. But I think it's... Yeah, really engaging with the individual and not having expectations. If you're there to support them, it's really about trying to get a feel for where they're at 
and and of course then it's about trying to build relationships that's the key to always building relationships and like in any relationship if it's the first time i've met you i'm not going to jump in with invasive questions you might want to tell me stuff that's different but i think it's really about respect and basic so uh, human courtesies and, and 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 good human communication listening warmth things like that Technically, I've been homeless for over 10 years. The government definition of homelessness is if you're living in temporary accommodation. I've lived in two hostels, I'm now in temporary accommodation, and, and basically the council, I had a, I had a proper little flat on, on a, a, a housing association estate, and um, because the council didn't pay my rent, I eventually got thrown out. I went to court several times, and I basically, it's wholly down to, to, to my local authority that I'm, I found myself in that situation. And there's a certain amount of stress involved. Um, and I, I like to think that I'm reasonably self-aware. So in terms of, I mean, it, it is a stressful situation. And um, I, I ha there have been times when, that, when there's been dark times, but I'm, I'm not somebody who will just sit in a hostel all day long watching videos. As far as I'm concerned, there's a whole wide world out there. And if you're not interacting with your environment, you will go up the wall. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but that's effectively what will happen. So I've, I've always been quite cautious about my situation. And a little while ago, uh, it was some seven years ago, I was able to get some part-time work and my employer was very supportive. I was working for a writing and design um, social enterprise. It was a real lifeline for me. And also it gave me a creative outlet because I was writing. So I, I, th I, I don't doubt that that helped, helped me stay, stay sane because you, I just know that there are risks out there. Well, well the staff and volunteers, they have to be switched on to, to what the problems are and what the risks are and where the dangers are and they also have to be able to signpost their clients to professional services. They, they have to have some kind of understanding as to why people find themselves in these kind of situations. Um, nobody, I mean, but nobody likes going to a charity and asking for a handout. The most common type of mental distress I come across in my contact with homeless people is one of despair, one of crisis, uh, which is mainly about being socially excluded, being stigmatised. So feelings of shame are intense, they're, they're, they're absolutely massive and underlie all relationships. Uh, which is why I think mainstream professionals who don't quite understand the extent of the shame, the humiliation, um, all of these terrible consequences of social exclusion, uh, they cannot relate to that person in an empowering, hope-giving way. There's an interaction between social exclusion and self-exclusion which meets in homelessness. That a lot of homeless people I've come across exclude themselves because they don't have the social, psychological, emotional equipment to engage and society and the social institutions excludes them because they don't have the understanding and the tools with which to include them. And it's a tragedy, it's tragic. In some ways I try to normalise my situation by using the alcohol. Uh, and, and like I say, it numbed a lot of stuff out. So it was, it was like, instead of using the intellect that I've got, I, I just allow my brain to shut down so that I didn't have to face the realities uh, of, of being homeless and being in that situation. Um, 
it's it was quite a desperate situation that you're in. You, you feel so disconnected uh, from the rest of society. Uh, I remember when I first came to London back in 2003, and I remember watching the rush hour uh, and people going past. Uh, and I used to look at the people. I used to literally sit there and watch these people going past and go, how do you do that? How do you have a job? How do you, how do you have a life? There was like watching an alien race that I felt so disconnected because I didn't understand. I, I had no concept, idea of how you held down a job, how you just had a normal life. Uh, and I was just puzzled, completely puzzled. And I think one of the fundamental human needs is to be recognised as an individual, is to be made to feel valuable, unique and entitled. Now all of those things are taken away from homeless people. A homeless person is no longer an individual, it's a homeless person. Idiosyncrasies, individual needs are no longer related or perceived as such you suddenly become part of a category, part of a group. And this feeds into accommodation, of course, hostels, uh, institutions for homeless people, irrespective of the individual's needs. So, for example, a recovering alcoholic may well be housed next to a group of alcoholics in a hostel, etc., etc. So I think volunteers, in interacting with homeless people, I think should first and foremost try to connect with that person at an emotional level because I think homeless people are incredibly lonely. They're isolated, they're stigmatised, they cannot engage with institutions, institutions don't want them, they're prejudged on their appearance, on maybe their unusual behaviour, which is usually one of distress and despair. So they're incredibly lonely. And loneliness, of course, makes us feel that we don't exist because we're social beings. We need social recognition to feel that we exist, that we have an existence. So first and foremost, I would say to anybody working with homeless people, try and connect with that individual. Try and understand their language because their experiences are so unusual compared to our experiences that their language may well reflect that. And the things they talk about might sound weird and wonderful to us, but may actually be totally true. It's just that we can't relate to that. So there's something about constructing a common language with that person. And only when there's a common language and common understanding can then that person be made to feel important, heard, recognised, a human being. It's hanging on to the fact that people, they may be homeless, may have mental health problems, they are human beings like everyone else. They are, they're the same needs, wants, abilities, all the rest of it. We're all, we're all, every, we're all individuals and sometimes life is going well, sometimes it's not. The big thing we need is relationships and to be connected. And, and to, so we can we can experience safety to then go on and do fulfil our potential. But I think that's to me a sort of key message. Mm -hmm.